Difficult people are simply master teachers who appear to us to help us work through different issues that we have not yet worked through, and they appear in the form of a difficult person. But if you're able to name them, it's like you're lifting the veil and saying, I see you. And now that I see you, I know just what to do with you. So here's what to do with them. There are three basic types of critics that you're going to deal on with on a daily basis. Now, the three most common types of critics that you'll find are going to be the messenger, the prophet, and the saboteur. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about just the saboteur, and then in upcoming lessons, I'll go over what the messenger and the prophet are all about and what to do when you recognize them, okay? So the saboteur. The saboteur you're going to recognize because they come appearing to be friendly. They tend to judge you or criticize you in front of other people because what they really want to do is tear you down. You know, they want to set you up and then tear you down. They want to sabotage your success and they tend to do it again under the guise of a friend offering some advice. So before I get into the responses, let's play a game. It's time to play. What would you say? All right, so picture this. It's lunchtime. You're in the break room slash lunchroom because he decided not to go out. And if you're like me, you're kind of sitting behind the dumpster shoving your face full of tuna on rye. And all of a sudden, Trixie comes in. And Trixie is one of those where she's a passive aggressive communicator. She likes to punish you, but she's not upfront about it. She's got some of her, you know, worker bees around her. And she sees you and says something like, oh, <laughs> hey, you know, I meant to tell you, I've seen you working on that XYZ project a lot this week. I used to do those all the time. They're so easy. And I noticed that you're doing it all wrong. Would you like me to show you how to do it right? What do you say? Picture this. You're at a holiday party. Woo! You're at a family holiday extravaganza. And again, if you're like me, you're probably sitting in the corner wishing that the Hellmouth would just open up and suck you in before the rapture comes. But unfortunately, instead of that, here comes Aunt Rose. And Aunt Rose, she's coming along and she says, oh, hi. hi. Ring a dingy, happy holidays. She's enjoying the party. And you say to Aunt Rose, hello, Rose. And Rose says, hi. So let's go. Oh, is that your daughter over there? And you're bracing yourself because Aunt Rose is known for being judgmental, but specifically judgmental regarding you and your parenting skills. Rose says to you something like, oh, <laughs> how'd you like a little free advice? <laughs> If I wanted to restructure the laws of power with her and let her know that, ah, uh -uh, you're not doing that here, sweetheart. <laughs> I want to make sure that I use certain phrases and don't use other phrases. For example, I don't want to use the phrase, I think, with Rose. So put that on your danger phrase list if you have not yet written it down. Instead of I think, which tends to say, you know, I'm just spewing out whatever's coming into my brain right now. First of all, when you say I think at the beginning of a sentence, you're simply stating the obvious. I mean, hopefully the words that are coming out of your mouth are coming from your brain and that's what you're thinking. Although a lot of people without brains do a whole lot of talking according to the scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and I found that to be true. Now, when I say instead of I think, like I think that's true, I have found that to be true. What I'm doing is I'm saying I am a thinking person. I take information, process it, and then reflect on it and may or may not change my mind, but it's based on the information that I have gathered and reflected upon. I learn things. And don't forget while you're delivering your messages to use nonverbal cues. If you can purposefully send nonverbal cues like the body check or the pregnant blank, what you're telling people is I am cool as a cuke. This is so easy. I'm just thinking about what I'm going to have for lunch as I deliver this message, but it's going to be a perfect, powerful message. See what I mean? If you like these specific type of tactics, make sure to go to Dan O'Connor training in the store. And I recommend only our VIP all access pass because that gives you access to everything in the past, present, and in the future forever. And you will find after you buy that pass, these types of tactics in our Step Out of the Shadows and Speak course. Also, you want to give people direction as you're delivering these messages. You know, when you're here to reestablish the laws of power and the rules of engagement, well, that is not going to work out for you because in my response, I'm going to tell you what the rules of power are and I'm going to give you direction. And in doing so, I'm establishing the rules of power. I'm going to tell you 
when you can and cannot communicate and how with me. That is going to reset the rules of engagement and again, reestablish the laws of power in case anyone thinks they may have shifted back to me. So if I were dealing with Aunt Rose, for example, who's saying something like that to me at a party, I recommend something like this. Well, Rose, I have to tell you, I have found that advice is just like anything else. You get what you pay for, don't you think? However, if you are giving it out and want me to listen to it, go ahead, you can do that and then I'll tell you what I think of it. Did you like that? If you did, make sure to like this video, share it, and comment below. When somebody offers you free advice, remember, take heed. Because people who have valuable knowledge or valuable advice don't just give it out for free and they certainly don't ask you if you want some free, valuable something. You know what I mean? Because it cannot, by nature, be both valuable and free. That can't happen. And people with really good information don't just go around giving it to people unless they love them. And you might even ask, do you love me, Rose? Is that? I didn't know you loved me like that. If you feel like it. I'm going to assume she doesn't. And so I'm going to assume that that information that she wants to give me for free is just like anything else for free. Like as if on her way to the dumpster, she had a big box of her old socks and underwear and you know saw me and went, oh, Dan, hey, oh, maybe you want some of this old stuff that I was going to throw in the garbage. Looks like you're somebody who might want it. So why don't you take what you need and then when you're done, throw the rest away, okay? All right, you know, Rose, I'm gonna tell you what you can do with your holy socks and your elasticless underwear. You can stuff it the same place you're gonna put your advice. I'm gonna tell you that in a really nice way, so I'm gonna tell you. But in addition to that, I also told you, hey, if you wanna throw it on my feet, you know, if you're, if you're passing out your trash, you can go ahead, I gave you instruction, and do that, and then I'll tell you what I think of it. I'll judge you on it afterwards. And then I gave you permission, go ahead. When you do all of those things, you're reestablishing the laws of power, you're redefining the rules of engagement, and you're telling them you can stuff your advice just where you'd put your old, dirty, smelly, holy socks and elasticless underwear. That's where it goes. Rose. <laughs> so, <laughs> coming back now to Trixie in the lunchroom. Trixie tends to take you off guard just while you're putting, you know, a nice bite of albacore right in there. You know, and then she says what she has to say and you're like, <laughs> Instead of that, try something like this. <clears throat> well, Trixie, I have found that choosing someone from whom I would accept professional advice or guidance is of paramount importance. <sighs> and I have to be frank with you, you and I, we're just not there. Did you notice the nonverbal cues? <laughs> I wanna make sure that Trixie knows and everyone else who'd be listening to that knows. I find when I accept advice or direction from somebody, it's an important thing. So I'm gonna be frank with you. Now remember, put on your danger phrase list, honest. We should never have to say, let me be honest because that implies that otherwise I might not be. Being frank, however, is I'm gonna be candid and simply tell you something without sugarcoating it. And you and I, we're not there. When you can tell people, hey, you don't fit into that mold. I'm again reestablishing the laws of power with you and I'm letting you know in front of everybody, I don't want or need your advice that I have deemed to be not up to par. Since you said it, I thought I'd tell you. To be an assertive communicator, you are communicating in a clear, straightforward way. Even though those messages are hard to hear if you're the saboteur, their whole purpose at the beginning was to do you harm or to cause you suffering to begin with. And sometimes to get through to people like that, you need to speak of their language. And although I normally advocate communicating with a soft touch and with compassion and in a mindful way, sometimes you just gotta overturn the tables in the temple. You know what I mean? So in our next lesson, we're gonna go over the messenger and the prophet. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, make sure to subscribe for more like that before heading on over to danoconnortraining.com where you can download your free professional communication starter kit. I think you're really going to like that. Once you're done over there, come on back here and watch some more of these great videos. For everybody here at Dan O'Connor Training, including Buddy and Maggie, this is Dan O'Connor signing off.